here. <laughs> Couldn't get the door open. Oh, I see. Next time, you might try putting them down, sir. Yeah, well, I, I'll try that next time. Where would you like me to put them? On the desk. Yes. What happened to you at lunch? Oh, I, I forgot. I should have called you. I was watching a broadcast. You haven't eaten anything. Yes, I had something to eat. I had two candy bars and a bag of... mixed nuts. If they ever took out those vending machines, you'd starve to death. <laughs> um, say, pardon me, but what... Are you doing anything tonight? Not yet. Why? Well, my little theater group is having a dress rehearsal, and I, I thought you might like to watch it. Are you going to be in it? No, but I'm... I'm understudying all the parts. Well, let's hope your leading lady doesn't get sick. <laughs> it's really a very good play, though. Written by Rogerson Hammerstein. Who? Rogerson P. Hammerstein. He's one of the students at the school. No. no thanks, Mickey. If you were in it, I'd love to. But tonight's my night for washing my hair and doing my nails and stuff. Oh. Mike, I know it's none of my business, but how long have you belonged to this little theater group? About a year. And how much does it cost you? Sixty dollars a month. And have you ever been in a play? <laughs> no. But Mr. Swift says he's saving me for just the right part. I see. Well, it's your money. Mr. Swift says I'm improving every month. Doing what? Painting scenery? Pulling curtains? Sweeping up? Well, that show business, you've got to learn it from the ground up. I know, Mickey. But you've got a good job here. A chance for advancement. How many actors work steady? Mr. Swift says I'm very versatile. Well, I could do anything right now if I only had the opportunity. I could... Look at even this. Peter Abel, Private Eye. Bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum. Music down. The National Broadcasting Company presents another exciting adventure of the files of Peter Abel, Private Detective. Bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum, bum this is Peter Abel. My business troubles a partner. When somebody's got it, they bring it to me. Like the other day, I was sitting in my office with my feet on the desk, listening to the rain outside. There was a knock at my door. The door opens, closes. It was a man, not just any man. When I looked up at this one, I felt like a little kid looking up at the Empire State Building for the first time. I guessed him to be a good seven feet tall, and he must have tipped the scales at around 300. The gun in his hand was big, too. Is your name Peter Abel? That's right. And get up from the desk, Mr. Abel, and walk over to me. Okay, now, what's the idea of that gun? Just to make sure you don't give me no trouble. <laughs> give you any trouble? Do you mind if I have a cigarette? Give me a gun, or I'll break your arm off. You, 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 uh, you can keep it. Thanks. It wasn't loaded anyway. <sighs> I wonder if we could trade him off to another network. Oh, he's all right, Mr. Brown. He's just ambitious. So is Machine Gun Kelly. But he's really an awfully nice guy. He's just obsessed with becoming an actor. Why? I don't know. It's in his blood, I guess. His mother was in burlesque. What does his father do? Juggle? <laughs> no, he's a policeman. It's kind of romantic the way he met Mrs. Mulligan. He was with a squad that raided the theater where she was, uh, dancing. Oh, it must have been a case of love at first sight. Mr. Brown. Well, I wish him luck, but he hasn't a chance in television. Why not? Well, he's too small to be a wrestler and too big to be a puppet. <laughs> Well, let's just say it was par for the course. Is Dad home yet? Oh, not yet. It's pay night. He'd be stopping for the beer and the flowers. Well, I've got a rehearsal at 7 o'clock. I'm going to go wash up. What's for chow? A leg of lamb. Oh, and don't splash water all over the bathroom. I clean house all day. I won't. Well, I'm home. I'm out here. <laughs> there you are, darling. <laughs> Thank you, dear. They're beautiful. Oh. 
Oh. oh God. Here you are. Chow hard, Dave. I had a terrible day. First thing that happens is a robbery in a delicatessen store over on Boyle Avenue. Charlie and me had indigestion all afternoon. Good thing it wasn't a saloon. You know, now, sometimes I wish I could get away from it all. Why don't you join the Foreign Legion? <laughs> It'll be better than what I've been doing for the last 29 years. Why does everybody hate a cop? Not everybody. Oh, you're one in a million. Honest to Pete now. People just don't appreciate what you try to do for them. I try to do my duty, be polite and courteous like the book says, and what happens? Like this afternoon, we get a call, a guy's beating up his wife at 4th and Jefferson. Charlie and me go over and pull the guy off, and what do you think she does? Who? What in the world? She bit me. Look at that. I did. What's that? Oh, nothing. Nothing. It's just a scratch. You going out tonight? Yeah, I've got a rehearsal at 7 o'clock. I might have known. Or you can waste your time with such shenanigans when you could be studying the police manual and making a fine future for yourself. Oh, Dad, don't start that again, please. Hey, you listen to your father, Michael. You make a lot of fine friends on the force. If you're lucky, you might even get bitten on the leg. Bitten on the leg? Is that what happened? <laughs> you didn't... All right, all right, I give up. Then it might interest you two wise guys to know there's a cleanup campaign coming up against them phony dramatic schools that take poor suckers' money and tell them they're going to put them in pictures. The Jonathan Swift Academy of Drama and Theater Arts is above reproach. Maybe it is, but you've been going to that school for nearly a year now, and I haven't seen you in a play yet. Oh, well, that's because... Mm. Yes, me, Swift I don't think this Jonathan Smith knows talent when he Swift, sees it. Swift. All right, Swift, then. He don't know talent when he sees it. He knows talent no, when he sees it. Yeah, Michael, like put the bread on the table. The right part, yeah. Joe, have a beer and cool off. All right. <laughs> Now remember, darling, the exit is grandly. Then pause, glance over your shoulder at Robert. I'll be glancing back at a bare stage if David doesn't get here soon. It must be almost 8 o'clock. Harvest time! <laughs> he doesn't answer his phone, Mr. Swift. I've let it ring a good five minutes. Oh, why does this have to happen? Where's it going? Oh, I'll get back to the wings. Yes, sir, I will. Where have you been? Mr. Swift is very upset. It isn't like you to be late for a dress rehearsal. Well, yes, Mr. Swift. There you are. Mr. Lambert, may I remind you the first rule of the theater is punctuality. In the future, tardiness will not be tolerated. Now, if you'll kindly consent to get into your costume, we'll proceed with the rehearsal. We'll start from the first act since the late Mr. Lambert does not make an entrance. Well? Oh, I can't go on. What did you say? I said, I can't go on. What? Speak up, man. Speak up. Remember, round pear-shaped tone. <laughs> How now, round cow? <laughs> what do you mean, you can't go on? It's my boys. They're in China, so I can't talk. <laughs> well, these sort of things will happen and must be taken in stride. But remember the one thing I've always told you. The first rule of the theater is the show must go on. We'll put on the understudy. Understudy! Not the curtain, just taller, and I'll take it right up. Oh, hi, David. You finally got here. We were worried about you. Thank you very much. What's the matter with your voice? Laryngitis. Oh, that's too bad. Have you tried lemon and honey for it? I've tried everything. Do you think you're going to be all right for tomorrow night? I'm afraid not. Well, it's a good thing you got an understudy. <laughs> understudy? That's me! Yes, Pelican, that's you. But this is wonderful, a chance I've been waiting for. After all the work and, and, and study, all these months, my prayers have been answered, not just a meager little walk-on, not just any little part, but the lead. Me! 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 <laughs> Julie, when I got your message, I flew like the, uh, wind. <laughs> Julie, when I got your message, uh, Ju Julie, when I... Uh.
Michael? Yes, Ma. Got the jitters. It'll be all right. But I don't know my lines, Ma. Of course you do. You know them backwards. That's the way they're coming out. The minute you step out on the stage, it'll all come back to you. I hope you're right. I finish getting dressed. You don't want to be late. Mom, listen. Yes? Uh, don't you think that... I mean, sh shouldn't I... Shouldn't you what? Well, I, I'm awful short, Mom, you know. Really? I hadn't noticed. Well, shouldn't a bleeding man be a, a little, little taller? What do you want to be? An actor or a center on a basketball team? Oh, Mom, you know what I mean. Sure. Mm. But that's a nice thing about show business. If the people like you, they like you, short or tall. <laughs> well, that's probably Pat. Now, hurry up. I will. I will. How's the leading man holding up? Well, he's a little nervous. <laughs> he Hello, should have been at work today. Hi, Sarge. <laughs> my, my, you almost look pretty. Nell, Nell, Nell. Is this tie all right, or should I wear the red one with the gold stripe? For heaven's sakes, Joe, you look fine. Anybody would think you were going to be in the play instead of Michael. Well, I've got to look presentable. After all, he is my own son. Say, it's late. Isn't he ready yet? Michael! I'll be right there, Mom. Now, look, Nell. You know about these things. Is he going to be all right? He'll do fine. After all, it's just a little theater, and they're all students. No, oh, no, you don't know. Somebody's liable to be there that's important. I asked Mr. Brown, my boss. He'll be there. Oh, you see, now, Mike? Yes. <laughs> What the devil is that you've got on your feet? Gulliver Elevateds. I bought them yesterday. What for? To make me look taller. A lot of actors wear them. Do you mean to say you're going to wear those things on the stage? You'll fall off them and break your neck. No, oh. Joe, he's all right. I think you look wonderful, Michael. And so do I. Do you really? We all do. Now, come on. I don't want to get a ticket for speed. <laughs> in 10 minutes. I'll do my very best. Cow now, brown cow. Cow. <laughs> I just came in to wish you luck. Thank you. And Mulligan, remember, the Jonathan Swift Academy of Drama and Theater Arts has a standard to maintain. The friends and families of all my students are in the audience. My reputation is at stake. I'll try real hard, sir. And Mulligan, my play. Those endless months of exhausting devotion. Days and nights without food or sleep. Emotions strained to the breaking point. Tears and laughter, passion and pain. My heart and blood, my very soul is the mold from which it is fashioned. It's the child of my brain. The fruit of my labor, the cornerstone of my career, the gateway to my future. Please, Mulligan, please, don't louse it up. <laughs> Take a letter, Miss Harding. Oh, hi, Mr. Brown. I'm sure glad you could come. Well, there aren't many secretaries I'd do this for. I'd like to meet Mickey's parents, Mrs. Mulligan, Mr. Brown. How, How do, do you do? do? How do you do? I wish this thing would hurry up and start. You don't mind handing the curtain, do you, Rogerson? No. It never occurred to me to have an understudy for Mulligan. Mr. Swift! <laughs> How now, brown cow? You found it! Yes, oh, it all to streptochlorosulfur seeking. Quick, in your costume. There's not a moment to lose. I'll make the announcement. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Jonathan Swift Academy of Drama and Theatre Arts. This is to be the premiere of Rogerson P. Hammerstein's new drama, Tomorrow Starts September. There's been a slight change in the cast, I'm very happy to announce. The part of Robert Heather will be played by David Lambert. Thank you. Well, that's Michael's part. It is? I wonder what could have happened. <clears throat> well, I'm certainly going to find out. Well, don't take it so hard, Mulligan, old boy. It's all part of the game. And you must admit you're not exactly the heroic leading man type, you know. I guess you're right. Mike. Mike, what's going on? What's that fellow out there mean saying somebody's going to play your part? That's right, Dad. David here. Oh, David Lambert, this is my father, Mr. Mulligan. How do you do? He had laryngitis and lost his voice. He finally got it back. That's right. Streptochlorosulfacetin, the new wonder drug. But, Mike, what about you? Hey, Mulligan, get out there and stand by the curtain. David, hurry up. But, Mike... That's the way it goes, Dad. That show business. <clears throat> well, very glad to meet you, Mr. Mulligan. That's a fine boy you have there. Son, you forgot your medicine. Oh, thank you very much. Better take another shot now. You know the old saying, an ounce of prevention. Good idea. <laughs> Julie. Yes, Father? Julie, I'm your father. The most important thing in my life is your happiness. I know. Far be it from me to advise what course you must take. Of a certainty, that must be your decision. But... There is your mother to consider. I've made a mistake and I'm sorry. Here's Robert. It is your decision. But whatever you decide, you have my blessing. Father. I'll be in my study. But remember, Julie, tomorrow starts September. Come in. Robert. Mm. Cut. Get the rest of your costume. Well, what's happened? He's lost his voice again. Well, come on, get going. <laughs> How now, bro? Oh, I'll make you now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, due to an unfortunate mishap, there will again be a change in the cast. The role of Robert Heather will be played by Mr. Michael Mulligan. Thank you. Uh, Joe. Yes, dear. What happened? Oh, that poor Lambert kid lost his voice again. Oh. It's a shame. <coughs> Julie. Yes, Father. Julie, I'm your father. The most important thing in my life is your See what's keeping Mulligan. You miss his cue. For me to advise you what course you must take, that must most certainly be your decision. But there is your mother to consider. I've made a mistake, and I'm sorry. That's Robert. It is your decision. But whatever you decide, you have my blessing. Father. I'll be in my study. <laughs> but remember, Julie, tomorrow starts September. Come in. <laughs> Robert. Joe. Get on with the play. 
I got your message. I flew like the wind. Oh, Julie, darling. No. No? Robert, you must never see me again. Why not, Julie? Because I'm going to marry Stanley Shelton. Stanley Shelton? understand this. Robert, it doesn't make just, sense. Just leave. But what? What of our love? And when September comes again, look back and remember. But I I can't let you go. Please, Robert, please. It's been beautiful. But it must wait, end. Wait. All right, then. I will go. But our love will remain. And when September returns again, and September, after September, I'll always remember. And we will be together due to circumstances. Quiet. Mickey Rooney's on the air. Mickey, come on now, snap out of it. It isn't the end of the world. It isn't? No, it isn't. It's not so much for myself, but poor Mr. Swift. I can't stand to see a grown man cry. And poor Rogerson. If I couldn't run faster than he can, he'd be a murderer today. <laughs> well, good morning, Mulligan. Say, I'm sorry I didn't get to thank you last night. Thank me for what? I haven't had so much fun in years. I laughed myself sick. Well, you weren't supposed to laugh. It wasn't a comedy. I ruined everything. You didn't ruin anything. That was the worst piece of trash ever written. The greatest actors on earth couldn't have made anything of it. They, they couldn't? Of course not. At least, you made the people laugh. And when you can do that, you've nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> I was telling Mrs. Brown about it at breakfast this morning. When you pulled off the doorknob. Oh, well, the door, it was... <laughs> and when you smashed the vase. Uh, I hit it, not that. I didn't... Really... <laughs> well, at least I'm glad he had a good time. The whole thing was a break for me, too. A break for you? What do you mean? Well, now that you're not with that swift academy of whatever it is anymore, you'll have a free evening to take me out. Like tonight, for instance? For instance? Now, get back to work, Mulligan. Yes, ma'am. Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Oh, hi, folks. It's me again. And that was the good word from the folks who'll be bringing you our next Hey Mulligan show. We sincerely hope you like it. But most important of all, we want to thank you wonderful ladies and gentlemen out there for viewing our first Hey Mulligan show. And if you liked what you saw, please drop me a line and tell me about it. We'd greatly appreciate it. After all, you're the folks we're trying to please. So on behalf of the Mulligan family, here's hoping that you and your family will be with us the same time next week. We've got a wonderful show lined up for you, too. It's all about a young fellow who tried... Yeah.
Mickey Rooney Show was brought to you by Green Giant Brands. Green Giant Peas, New Process Niblets Corn, Niblets Mexicorn Corn with Peppers, and Green Giant Cream Style Corn.